From thoughts to reality, how to create a successful strategy, or at least to be able to understand the conceptual side of creating the proper type of strategy. Let's step back and first take a big overview picture. In the last section we talked about strategy and tactics and how this was a basic approach to thinking and that it really didn't cover the depth that's necessary to be able to, to properly strategize. It didn't have the, the content to be able to make great decisions in the way in which we actually perform the role. So let's take a look at it from a bigger picture and you're going to see on, going to see on your screen right now, you're going to see a picture of the cyclonic strategic thinking model. The tool has a, uh, I, it's an advanced version of strategizing. If you could see, there's five separate sections to it. In the first section, we have the desired outcome, and that's the model where we often are, and I'm gonna go into the pieces, we often start with the strategy without realizing it, and as I go through each section, you'll learn, but we really should be starting with desired outcome. It's a big overview picture. The second portion of it is the, uh, a box where you can see there's three different pieces within it. There is the strategy, the macro tactics, and then the tactics. And to the right of it is a cyclone, a, a model going around, and I'm going to go over a little bit of both of these. But you also notice one other piece in there that there's a separated at the bottom, there's execution. And the reason I think it's interesting that we've added execution to the model is because how often do we ever hear strategy, tactics, execution? And yet almost every time you read these books currently, they say execution is the most important part about strategy or planning or working. No, it's not. See that, those sections on top? That's what you're paid to think about. You're paid to think about coming up with, coming up with plans, thinking the desired outcome, figuring out the strategy, figuring out the macro tactics, and then moving it into texts that are usable, and then people to execute on it, whether you're being the person executed, uh, execute on it or they are. So now the, the cyclone on the side is an interesting addition to it. The cyclone exists both in the enterprise thinking model, right in the center there's a little cyclone. If you probably didn't pay as much attention to it, we did bring it up in the book. But uh, here we're going to expand on it. And I, what I'd like you to do is consider the cyclone somewhat like a tornado or a cyclone, picking up ideas and then tossing those that don't work out. And that's the way our brain works. Our brain works by uh, addressing a challenge and coming up with ideas, collectively bringing them together. And whether it be data, whether it be uh, information, thoughts, lessons, you gather them up. And then those that don't work, you toss them out or you might find new information. Now you toss out things such as um, remove theories or unworkable data or failed models. And at one point during the process, you have to decide you're going to execute on it. I mean, we can't think forever. That's the analysis to paralysis or the fast shooter that we've talked about in the past. And if you do this right, you can kind of think of it in the, in the scope of most of the most brilliant ideas don't come about in a meeting. That people need time. They need cyclonic time. <clears throat> Two government boats going by. Very loud. Uh, what people need is they need the time to be able to come up with ideas. And what we tend to, as leaders, and leaders tend to do this, you could probably know there's, we get to a point where we have to react. And if you use this type of expanded model, and as we go into details, you'll understand why, what you'll do is you realize that there's multiple steps within it that you can actually amplify, you can use to improve your condition. And if you do it properly, what you'll end up seeing is that Not only are the best ideas found outside the meeting, but cyclonic thinking will be able to be used through all of the five phases. Because not every plan works out exactly as planned. So the reason you see in, that, in those boxes that there's a space between each one of them is because you might be working on your strategy, work all the way down and realize, ah, to reach our desired outcome, I have to go back up again. And I wanted to somehow symbolize with the graphical piece that this is an interchange of ideas that go up and down, and you've done this. You've come up with a concept, come up with a direction, you put together some plans, you start to go out and test them and go, oh my God, we're off on this. And you constantly revise them until you get to the point. And your job is to figure out all four of those so that the people can ex who execute on the idea can actually deliver on it. So right now what I'd like to do is to take a thread, we're going to jump into the next portion of it, which is how to be able to look at each individual piece and then collectively. So let's get started.